I snorted myself awake, apparently having fallen into a deep sleep without even realising it. Rubbing my right eye with the back of my hand, I took a brief moment to study my surroundings. It appeared I was sitting in a pitch black room of some sort. I had apparently rested my weary head on a desk, with my seven year old beat up laptop next to me and a few monitors still on, blinding me with their harsh, uncaring glare. Good grief. I muttered to myself as I turned off one of the monitors and looked around the featureless room before I moved my feet on the wait is this carpet I thought to myself as I shifted my covered feet on the carpet the foreignness of the environment disorientating me even more than the initial shock and as I moved my feet on the floor I hit what seems to be a familiar object Moving my feet around the object, I felt the fabric of the material giving in, with a series of... ropes? No, not ropes. Come on, what's the word? Laces? Yeah, laces. I ducked my head down the desk, and to my relief, I found my familiar pair of charcoal brown low-cut chucks, complete with the idiosyncratic way I would usually tie the black laces. I retrieved the shoes and jammed them back onto my feet, and looked around. Well, it's incredibly obvious I'm not in my bedroom, I reasoned, since first off I don't have a carpet or multiple monitors in my room. Secondly, my annoying housemates, who, for all their years, have never learned the subtle nuances of shutting up at three in the morning. Wait, what's the time? I instinctively held up my left wrist close to my face and pressed a button. 2.31, the red LED lights built into my watch reported back to me. Wonderful, I said to myself. It's 2.30am and I have no idea where I am right now. I just need to get my bearings, that's all. I then moved towards the wall, groping around the darkness trying to find something that resembles a light switch before my fingers rested on something that vaguely reminds me of one. I flicked the switch squinting my eyes as brightness started to illuminate the room. To my surprise, I realised where I was. I'm still at the computer lab in campus, apparently, and I had remembered why I'm here in the first place. I sauntered back to my desk at the corner they had set up for the final year projects and looked around. On my desk, there were several books on security and systems virtualization and I seemed to vaguely remember a few of my classmates were also there before I dozed off. I remember eating dinner before heading out to the lab, promising myself to get out before 11, running tests and listening to music while chatting with my friends, but somehow I managed to black out and everyone simply left without bothering to check up on me, turning the lights off as they did so. They either thought I was pulling an all-nighter or simply forgot about me as they left for the night. Whatever, I muttered, as I went outside the lab, trying to get away from the room's bone-chilling temperature. Once outside, I decided to take a look around the other computer labs, which is separated by the rest of the building by a couple of glass doors, which is usually locked after midnight and doesn't open up until seven in the morning. So yes, I'm stuck here for a few hours. Good thing they installed a row of vending machines around this area, as well as restrooms, I stamped my feet and rubbed my palms for a few moments. I started walking down the corridor, peering into the doors, looking at the empty classrooms, screensavers, jumping around the various types of computers housed in each lab, as if eagerly waiting for the next morning where they can be used again. I stopped in front of a row of vending machines, and after rooting through my pockets for some bills and loose change, I managed to get a cup of hot chocolate, a chicken salad sandwich, and a packet of corn twists. As I slowly walked back into my office, I passed by a laboratory and something caught my eye. Did that monitor flicker? I thought to myself. Not the monitor's screen, mind you, the monitor itself. I could have sworn that the monitor twitched off for a moment. 
the sleek black outline turned into negatives with broken pixels jutting from both sides of the monitor. I blinked and just as I expected, the monitor returned to normal. That was weird, I said to myself. It's like a glitch in a game or something. Torn between investigating and going back to the safety of the lab, I decided to simply risk it for a moment. Tucking the packet of corn twists inside my trouser pocket, I held both the sandwich and cup of hot chocolate in one hand before opening the door with my free hand. Once inside the lab, I placed my foodstuffs on a table before I approached the monitor. Taking a moment to observe it, I saw that it was like any other 17-inch monitor I've seen before, made out of plastic and glass, looks and feels as solid and sturdy as any monitor I've ever seen before. I shook my head as I gathered my foodstuffs and headed for the door. Must be fatigue, I told myself. You think so? A voice replied. I paused midway through the door. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the famous fight or flight response. If you haven't, the basic premise is that in the event of a perceived harmful event, the body decides if you're going to run away or hold your ground and, well, fight. Ah, come on, I said out loud as I moved around the empty laboratory. Some smart guy messed around with the computers just to freak people out. Real mature. Despite the angry tone of my voice, I was actually terrified silly. Taking another deep breath, I calmed myself and walked out of the lab and headed back to my workstation. I hastily sat down and gulped the foodstuffs nervously, not caring if there was crumbs all over the place. I just needed to calm down. The stress of this project is messing with your head. After this, go home and catch up on your sleep. Everyone knows lack of sleep messes with your mind. A message appeared on a monitor on my left. You're not imagining things, it said in large uppercase letters. I sighed, wishing this prankster would just give up. I moved the mouse towards the top right corner of the screen and realised there's no close button. Assuming that the application was set to full screen, I tried several keyboard combinations to close the message, to no avail. Unnerved, I quickly turned off my monitor and after a brief debate on whether to restart the computer and lose some data in the process, or stare at the screen and hope it disappears. I quickly turn the monitor back on and... I'm greeted by the sparse wallpaper on the desktop. The text inexplicably disappeared from the screen. I'm seeing things. I shook my head tiredly. That's the only logical explanation. Exit logic stage left, the monitor displayed. Oh, now you're fucking with me, I said out loud. Am I? Another monitor flashed. Fuck it, I exclaimed. I'm out of here. And go where, pray tell, Monitor 1 taunted me. The doors are locked, remember? Monitor 2 joined in. I looked at my laptop, the screen still untouched by the weirdness going on around me. For a moment, anyway. This must be some kind of virus or Trojan, I reasoned. I mean, someone must have hacked into my webcam. That's how they can hear me talking out loud. I then moved my cursor to the shutdown button and clicked on it. Nothing. Could be a bug, I muttered out loud, clicking on the button again several times to no avail. I quickly launched the console and as soon as the familiar black on white text interface flashed up, I hastily typed the shutdown command. But as soon as I pressed enter, the computer replied, shutting down won't save you. Taken aback, I sat still for a moment before I quickly yanked the power cable away from the computer and plucked the battery out of the laptop and sighed with relief as the computer died immediately. Just as I was about to close the laptop, it turned itself on and displayed. Nice try. I then stood up and looked around the room and saw the monitors around the room. No, the room itself started to flicker. I stood up, frozen in a potent mixture of fascination and horror as I watched the paint from the sterile white walls peel off to reveal a series of pixels all over the wall. Changing colours, the incessant chittering growing even louder as reality melts into fiction, and I stood still, mesmerised by the changes happening in front of me, before snapping to my senses. 
I hastily left the room, my patience and grip on reality diminishing as I stayed there. I ran out, but where? The front doors locked, but not the fire escape, I realised. I quickly turned left, running through the dimly lit corridors, the persistent chittering noise following nearby, praying to myself that I can make it in time before. All of a sudden, I felt the world around me shaking violently, and I felt as if the very fabric of my existence being shook and torn apart, and just as I was about to scream in agony, I saw a flash of blue light filling my eyes. Error. The system has encountered a fatal error at memory location 0x000005F. If this is the first time you've seen this error message, restart your computer. If this error happens again, disable or remove any newly installed hardware or software. Press Ctrl-Alt-Delete to restart.